you can go to the doctor with these symptoms and, and what are the tests they're going to do? What's the first test they're going to do? If you can get them to test your thyroid, right, they're going to check your TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone. That's released by the pituitary gland to tell the thyroid to make more thyroid hormone. And if you have low thyroid, then you're going to have a very high level of TSH. That's right. So they just check TSH or yeah. thyroid stimulating hormone, which is a hormone that comes from your pituitary gland, communicates with your thyroid gland to make hormone. And if you're Thyroid gland is not working. That's going to create more TSH to try to pump more thyroid out. But we're learning that even what we thought were, quote, normal levels mm -hmm. are not optimal. No. That even, you know, we thought if you look at the reference range, it's five. And if it's over five, they might say, oh, you maybe have a little bit of thyroid issues. Well, we know from the American College of Endocrinology that the reference range should be maybe three or three and a half. And I would probably say it should be one, you know, one or two at, at the most. Even over two, I don't like to see. And then they don't check all the other tests no. that actually are important. And, and, and there are so many other ways that you have to look at the thyroid to understand its true function and what you're dealing with. So what are the other tests we would do at the Center so for Functional Medicine? So we would check, I mean, we the, would check for a free, T, a free T3, which is your free thyroid T3. Your free that's the active T4, hormone. It's active. So when your thyroid makes thyroid hormone, it makes two. It makes, um, thyroid, it makes T4 and it makes T3. Um, T4 is not the active form, it's T3. T4 goes to your body and it's converted in the liver, in the muscles, in the intestine, in the heart to T3. T3 is the active form and that is then going to enter the cells and have its result, its, its, its important impact on in a cellular metabolism. So we check for free T4, free T3, and it's something called reverse T3. Reverse T3 is an active T3 and it acts as a... As a um, like a break. It's on a the break. Thyroid. It's a breaking system. Uh, and basically, when you, uh, for any reason, you have too much T3, T4 will get converted to reverse T3. And re reverse T3 is sort of this inert T3 that won't have any impact. And that sort of is a breaking system. And, it all, and reverse T3 is also a marker for inflammation. It yeah. can be elevated when people have significant inflammation. Inflammation or chronic yeah. illness, right. And it, can, yeah. and, it, and it can block your thyroid. And so you can look like you have normal levels, but it actually... Uh, you're really functionally hypothyroid, even though your le other levels may be normal. Exactly. And that's something very rare, rarely checked. And then there, right. there are antibody levels that we check. Right. So we check the thyroid peroxidase antibody, and that's the main antibody that we check. It's probably the most sensitive for diagnosing uh, Hashimoto's. Yeah, so we check, yeah, the thyroid antibodies, like thyroid yeah. peroxidase, antithyroid globulin antibodies. And, and what I've learned over the years is people can have completely normal TSH, normal T3, normal T4, and they can have sky-high antibodies. Absolutely. And, and most traditional doctors, one, never even bother getting there because unless the TSH is elevated, they don't look. And second is if, if you have elevated antibodies, it means there's an autoimmune process going on. You better get on it before it gets too far. And often these patients feel much better when they get on thyroid replacement once they start having antibodies. But there, there's a lot of efforts that people yeah. are doing and that we, I mean, there are a lot of efforts that, that people are, tr are doing to try to reverse Hashimoto's and, and, and often very successfully in bringing the antibodies down using a more functional medicine approach with diet, lifestyle, the right supplementation and, and detoxification and hormonal balance and all the things we're talking about. Right. I mean, it's not always that easy, but it's possible. And, it, and I think if you get on it early, it's, it's, it's much easier before your thyroid's burned out.